Cheers. Cheers, cheers. Yeah, man. Hmm. So today we're going to be talking about how parents kind of let their kids go do like tsugaku commuting by themselves and like yeah. parenting stuff. But you wanted to talk about babies. I want to talk about babies for a second because I had somebody come up to me, one of my coworkers. She was talking to me and I want to see if you did this with your mm-hmm. son or sons. Now, it's weird that you have I know it's weird. I have two, two sons, now. two boys. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, um, Okay, so I was told that it's really important for a baby, like a newborn, to like lay on their parent's chest Mm -hmm. and that it actually causes severe developmental disorders if that doesn't happen. Yeah. Do you know about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's skin-to-skin contact and belly time. Really? You should call it. Yeah. Really? So what's the deal with that? So, So babies thrive on human touch. Okay. Right? And so ideally actually so there there's this book called tribes by um sebastian Junger where he talks about this he's the guy who wrote the perfect storm uh-huh. have you heard of the perfect storm oh, yeah. yeah so he's the author of that book too but um the more skin to skin contact time you have with your child the better more evenly developed they will become oh really there's a habit of that because like it's about you know like of course now humans are very rational, like we live in our brains. But before that, you know, when our brains aren't fully developed, we take in things from like smell and taste and touch and feel and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it releases a lot of like oxytocin, those chemicals and stuff like that, which is why one of the reasons why um, breastfeeding is so important compared to just giving formula, because you also have that connection with the mother. Um, but yeah, the, basically, the more that you hold and are in contact with your child, the more safe they feel. I see. Yeah. And so actually one thing that was interesting was um in um so my wife took this um program called like hypnobirthing or something like that. And what they were saying was actually when the baby is first born, you should not wipe the hands of the baby. Like you can wipe the body, but you shouldn't wipe the hands because what ends up happening is the baby, like because you have some of like the the fluid from from the mother on there, the baby will smell that and will get like a sense of the mom's smell. Mm. And that will actually help guide them to develop like a deeper connection with the mother yeah. or something like that because it's the mother's smell, you know? Yeah. But yeah, it's just, it's a very much like a primal thing, you That's know? That's interesting. But I mean, you know, to be honest, like when I look at like society day or I look at my own situation, right? So this is going to sound really, really like, um, like a sob syrup, but my mom didn't hold me very much. Yeah. And I can see things like that playing out in my life now. I see. You know? I, feel, I don't feel like I had that problem. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you probably didn't. I mean, you're... Yeah. 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 But yeah, but human context really yeah. important, you know? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, so basically, like, especially when you have your daughter, um, it would actually be better for you to be shirtless when you do that. Yeah, just, just give like, the old Peter Griffin, like, oh, yeah. so he can breastfeed yeah. you No, too. no, no, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Don't do, go that far, but like having skin skin contact, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I know. Um, um, but uh, yeah, so that's completely not... Today what we were going to talk about. Not at all what we were going to talk about, but um, I, 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 I'm, I'm really interested in baby stuff because my baby's going to be born next yeah, week. Yeah, right. So it's like that's all I can think about right now. Yeah. Um, so back to the topic of what we originally were going to talk about. Um, children today in Japan... I would say look like Batman. L- look what? They look like Batman. Like they have a mask on? No, they don't have the mask. Although that would be pretty cool. Okay. So when you see kids walking around here, I kid you not, they basically have like this like u- unlimited use utility belt. Okay. And like all of these little accessories that they're walking around with mm-hmm. when they're in elementary school. Um, they've got like a snack pouch. Yeah. They've got like an ID pouch. They've got like a little lanyard that's got like, you know, their name and mm-hmm. their address and like a little mm-hmm. cell phone on mm-hmm. it. They have their school backpack, which is super expensive. It's like a yeah. thousand bucks. Yeah. And it's like a huge tradition for like the grandparents to buy the backpack. Yeah. Um, and they're always like a certain color. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, they got the they got their little boonie hats mm-hmm. on. <laughs> uh, they're they're really adorable, actually. But yeah, they're um, decked out, man. They 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 just have everything. Yeah, they have like literally everything. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like this kid is like prepared for the apocalypse. <laughs> you know? Yeah, in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. like it's like they even have like a little medical pouch, but they'll yeah. have like little band aids and mm-hmm. like wipes and stuff. Okay. And it's just like 
it's pretty intense. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, when you when you send like your elementary school kid out on their own, it's kind of yeah, it can be kind of scary. I mean, fair enough, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, comparing it to America, it's like first of all, you don't send your kid out. Yeah. Into the world. So, just a question for you: did, did you ever walk to school? I did. You did. I did. I. I. My mom. Uh, my mom was a was a very busy businesswoman, mm-hmm. and my dad uh, worked uh, all day during the day. Mm-hmm. So um, occasionally, like they would come, mm-hmm. like if they were able to, and they would come and pick me up. But um, starting uh, seventh grade, mm-hmm. so when I was a chugaku or chugaku ichinensei, right? Um, I walked home. Mm-hmm. Um, and. It was a pretty long distance. Okay. Uh, I it was like probably two miles. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So okay. it it was a pretty pretty hefty hike. It took mm-hmm. me a better part of an hour to do mm-hmm. it. Um, but uh, the idea of like an elementary school doing or kid doing that, or God even forbid, having an elementary school ride the bus, mm-hmm. like the public bus to yeah. school, you would never see that in America. Yeah, it's funny because like my, I never walked to school. The only really? time I walked to school was when I was in third grade, and that was because the school was right across the street from my house. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, my mom always drove me to school. Sometimes yeah. I would walk home from school, but even yeah. up until like, even up until I got a license, yeah, my mom took me to school every day. Yeah. Man, I had to ride the public bus when I was in high school. Yeah. And I, so I had, I had, uh, we had what's called zero hour. What's that? Zero hours, zero period. Right, so first period started at like eight o'clock. Yeah, and zero period started at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Wow. So that means you had to be at school by six thirty. Well, I lived two hours away from school, so guess what time I had to wake up? What? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the thing that really sucked. Wait, so what time would you wake up? Uh, usually, I would wake up at like four thirty or five in the morning. Holy crap, man! Yeah, I can't every, imagine every that. morning. Yeah, my my dad was the real hero. I didn't I didn't really put much effort into waking up, but my my dad made sure I was on the bus every single morning. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was wow. intense. Uh, I I went to like a special pilot school okay. for high school, okay. so it was like it, it wasn't like a typical high school. Mm-hmm. So that that's that's why. why you went far away. Okay, but um, but yeah, you you just don't see like you'll see high schoolers taking public transportation mm-hmm. in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And I think it's like once once you reach like fifteen or sixteen, mm-hmm. it's, there's kind of this accepted yeah. thing where it's like, okay, you can you can make it through the day mm-hmm. without dying. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean. Uh, but here in Japan, it's like even in Tokyo, mm-hmm. you will see elementary school kids in the morning. Yeah, right, going by themselves. Yes, that is a regular thing you will see. Yeah, and in fact, I I will even push this to a, like a different direction. You will see kids walking home mm-hmm. at like nine or ten at night mm-hmm. and these are they're, they're not high schoolers these are like kids who are like seven or eight years old yeah walking home mm-hmm. by themselves mm-hmm. at that late and it's like that that concept is something that's still weird to me yeah you know what i mean because like in the states you would never do you, that you would just never see that here yeah. but it's, it's like a totally normal thing and the kid's probably just walking home from like mm-hmm. cram school or something yeah right but yeah no it's funny because like in my in my parents generation like it was kind of like after you came home from school, you stay outside until dinner time. Like don't yes. bother coming home. Well, you know? I I actually had that too when I was okay. a kid. Okay. Um, so like during summer vacation, uh, my mom would be gone for the day. Yeah. Right. And it's just like, all right, just go find someone to play in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Good luck. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, where. It's it's funny because of how independent kids are here, but mm-hmm. you don't see that here in Japan. Yeah. Like, kids are very much like, all right, if you're not at school, you are inside the house. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, so actually, so sometimes, though, um, so where I live, where, where I live, there's yeah. a lot of families and stuff. And I'll actually see, like, a group of girls or a group of boys playing together out in the park and stuff, and there's no parent around. Oh, really? Sometimes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe like, it's because the park's super close? Yeah, it could be because the park's super yeah. close. But, like... Like okay, so back in back in the states, so I told mm. you when I was in third grade, I lived right across the street from my school, right? Mm-hmm. And when I was in third grade, I would always see kids playing in the park and playing on the basketball yeah. court after school and stuff. Yeah. But you know, nowadays when I go back there, there's never 
anyone there yeah ever it's like empty yeah so like i feel like especially in america in these past like 10 15 years like parents just don't let their kids play outside anymore yeah there's definitely like i think i think it started in the 90s yeah where there was this like big scare of your kid getting kidnapped mm-hmm. you know um because i i definitely grew up with that like i i i don't think i i was young enough to to hit that like okay you don't get to go outside mm-hmm. but sorry i'm burping here yeah um there there was there was definitely like i go outside but it's like okay well just be careful who you talk to Mm -hmm. and it's like that conversation started with our generation yeah uh and probably my my brother and sister who are 10 years older than me Mm -hmm. they didn't get that Mm -hmm. it was just like all right good luck see ya yeah come back at dinner you know yeah and now now it's like evolved into uh don't go outside like Mm -hmm. somebody might attack you yeah well, it's funny because, like, actually, if you look at crime statistics, yeah. um, America, well, in the past couple of years, things have changed a bit, but America was getting safer as time went on. But, like, it's almost like the safer it got, the more worried yeah. some people became, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that is really interesting. Yeah. You know, it, it's still, like, really amazing, though, for me, like, just how much um, I feel like a lot, a lot of kids here have a decent amount of autonomy. Here, like you said, because I mean, so when people do tsugaku, they do commuting to school and stuff. Yeah. A lot of times they're in groups and stuff, but still, there's not a person around. Yeah. A lot. There's no. There's no adult around. It's just like the kids hanging out by themselves. Yeah. Whereas, like in the states, that just doesn't really happen. The parents always. You know, I I'll take that even a step further because you. One thing that I think is really interesting mm-hmm. is. I will go into classes here and mm-hmm. I I haven't been into an elementary school but I'm willing to I'm willing to wager that it's the same mm-hmm. but I'll go into my junior high classes and this will be like after school mm-hmm. there's no teachers around all the teachers are back in the office and you'll go into these classrooms mm-hmm. and the kids are studying what the kids are studying there's in kids the class? inside studying in the class and like just being like diligent and independent men you know and it's like that really shocked me the first time I saw it. It's like, why are you guys not messing around? Yeah, why are like you not like pulling pranks on your friends yeah. or like you know going like in, leaving school to go like to Harajuku or something. Like, yeah, that was so crazy for me to see. It's mm-hmm. like you guys are just actually doing responsible things. Yeah, like, what what is going on? <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, so it's it's like. Uh, I, I feel like that's that's the same case with younger kids because, you know, I'll go over and visit my friend's mm-hmm. house and he's got a he's got a daughter and, you know, he'll he'll sometimes just leave her in her room mm-hmm. and she's a young girl. She's yeah. an elementary school student and she's not playing. She just does her homework. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like for me, if I was that age, it's like, dude, yeah. I the only time I'm doing my homework is if my parents are watching. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> like I'm gonna be playing with my toys if I'm in my room. Yeah. So it's like it's it's so interesting how uh I I don't know if I would say Japanese kids are more independent mm-hmm. in general mm-hmm. than American kids, because I think it's kind of like a give or take thing. In yeah. some ways they are, some ways they aren't. Mm-hmm. But in in, in that specific Mm-hmm. uh instance it's it's like it's a night and day so actually that's kind of interesting so you said like maybe in general you wouldn't say that they're more independent just in some ways there are some ways they're not yeah what are some ways that you would say american kids are more independent i think socially socially okay socially i think um i think people people start uh in my opinion um developing relationships and developing their identity faster Mm -hmm. in american culture than Mm -hmm. they than they do in japanese culture Mm -hmm. um so i mean i've been i've been teaching at my school for almost seven years now Mm -hmm. and one thing that i'll notice and there's a very very stark difference between junior high school students Mm -hmm. in the u.s Mm -hmm. and junior high school students in america Mm -hmm. or let's let's try that again okay i'm a little drunk Junior high school students in the U.S. and junior high school students in Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, it gets a little bit closer when you mm-hmm. get when you get to high school, mm-hmm. but still, there's like a big difference. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll you'll see like uh, what I'm talking about is 
when you look at uh, junior high students in the U.S., Mm -hmm. okay, you get kids who are sometimes maybe doing under the table jobs. Yeah, right. The, 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 the idea of having a summer job is mm-hmm. something that starts in the U.S. Yeah, Baito starts in like, yeah, and right Baito when you're 16. Baito starts, if you're in the countryside at 16, but if you're in Tokyo or if you're at any kind of mm-hmm. like more higher level school, mm-hmm. you are not getting a job mm-hmm. until you graduate high school. Oh, no, I'm in, in the States. Like, so I got my oh, first yeah, job yeah, at yeah, 15, yeah. 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's 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 like almost assumed that you're going to get a job yeah, right. at 16. It's like if you if you don't have a job at 16... In America, you're you're looked at like, okay, are you just kind of wasting your time slacking yeah, right. off? You know? And that's a huge difference. And I, I think socially too, it's like um it, you can see it a lot in high school, but I, mm-hmm. again, this is something that usually starts in junior high where kids will start doing social events mm-hmm. by themselves without adults yeah. in junior high. So mm-hmm. what am I talking about? I'm talking about like, you know, skating parties. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about like those house parties house where parties, it's like, yeah. hey, look, my parents forgot a case of beer. Let's all get together. Yeah, right. You know, it's like things that shouldn't, that are illegal, but yeah. they happen. Yeah, right. It's like that's that's what kids do. Yeah. And it's like, you know, like, you know, sexual experiences too. Yeah. Like all of this stuff starts happening in junior high in yeah. America. Right. And I feel like a lot of the time that it does happen here in Japan, but it happens much later. Yeah, right. Like the stuff that I think Americans are kind of experiencing, Japanese kids are experiencing kind of like in high school or Mm -hmm. maybe even college. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? And that's what I mean when like you'll look at these two scenarios Mm -hmm. of like sometimes I think Japan has Mm -hmm. uh, like a higher level of independence and Mm -hmm. maturity with their kids and sometimes I think America Mm -hmm. does. I would would say like, so from what you're explaining, I would say that I feel like children here are more um i don't want to just say like obedient but like yeah they're like i'm not even sure i how feel to like explain. goal focused would goal be, focused would, okay would be a good way to put it that's a good way to say it. goal yeah. focused yeah I, I feel like um something i think kids have here that i notice because like when i talk to my students um something i notice with kids here is every Everyone kind of has a rough idea of what they want to do in life. Here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll talk to my students and be like, what do you want to do? And it's like, well, I want to be a veterinarian or I want to be a nurse or I want to be a flight attendant or whatever mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. you want to be. It's like there's an idea here where I feel like if you go to the U.S. and mm-hmm. you talk to kids, especially in junior high, mm-hmm. you talk to them and they're just like, I, I don't know. I want to yeah. graduate high school. Yeah, right. You know? Right. Like, they have no idea what you're doing. And it's like, that's a really common thing that you see when you talk to even college students in the yeah, US. Just it's like, have what fun. do you want to do? It's like, I, I don't know. It's like, my parents told me I need to go to college. So yeah. I'm here now. Yeah. You know? So it's, I, I feel like there's not really like a real emphasis on making goals in your life mm-hmm. in American culture. I get culture. that. It's more like living in the moment. Yeah. 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 And here in Japan, I think that there's a really strong push of, mm-hmm. especially I think like it's really centered around entrance exams. Right. Yeah. And so there's always a goal for the mm-hmm. student to be pushing. So they're in elementary school. Okay. Well, I got to take entrance exams to get into junior yeah. high. Now I'm junior high entrance exams to get into high school, mm-hmm. high school, get into college. It's like, there's all these steps. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's it's it, there's just a very clear path. That yeah, I think kids maybe like Jap like especially Japanese kids tend to be more focused on the pre-made path of this is what you need to do. Whereas in the yeah. states, it's more like free range. People yeah, don't know what I, to do. I I feel like it, and it's I'm not saying either is better than yeah. the other. I I feel like they both have their strengths and weaknesses. But there's there's definitely like a mentality of like. In Japan, it's like, okay, you need to do this to mm-hmm. be an adult. Yeah. And so you will go down this path and you'll you'll try to mold your life around this path. Mm-hmm. And in America, it's kind of like, okay, well, you got to just figure out how to be an adult. Yeah. Yeah, it's so funny. You know? Especially when you talk about um, like Shushokatsu, like finding a job out of college. Yeah. Because I, I didn't do any internships. Yeah. And when we came to graduate, like I talked to like a career counselor. He's like, yeah, did you do any internships? No. He's like, 
Okay, well, you can apply to jobs. Like, how yeah. do you do that? Oh, yeah, just go look at job boards. So you know? that ends up being a huge problem. And it's yeah. like there's there's this huge... Uh, you, you hear all the time of like people are... Well, I guess people our age, probably not. We're not mm-hmm. young anymore. But, but people in Speak their early... Speak for yourself. I'm 31 years young. <laughs> um, but you, you, you hear about like people fresh out of college, 22, 23, mm-hmm. of like, oh, I have this fancy degree. I can't do anything. Yeah. And it's just like you have no experience you've you've never you never mm-hmm. tried to get a job or anything mm-hmm. and you you don't really know where you're going mm-hmm. whereas like here in japan it's like you don't see that because mm-hmm. people graduate college and they're like all right cool check in the box mm-hmm. all right next i'm gonna go to the job company and yeah you're right gonna find me a job yeah right you know right um so it's like there there's just so much more of a structured system here yeah. but at the same time i think it's really hard to break out of that system. yeah right you know, something that something that I think you can be a lot more successful in the mm-hmm. U.S. in is networking. Networking, yeah, right. Like right, if right, you right. know how to network, you will be super successful in the mm-hmm. U.S. Where it's yeah. like here in Japan, it's like you'll still probably be successful, but not mm-hmm. even close well, to yeah, what you can get in the U.S. Yeah, but even if you're even if you don't network here in Japan, you can still get a good job by going through the pre-made steps, right? Yeah. Whereas, like in the states, one of the reasons why internships are so important when you're in college is because it builds your network, yes. right? Yes. And so, a lot of times, like if you don't if you don't have an internship, you have no contacts, and yeah. then it's going to be really hard to get a job. Yeah. Now, I was like, I knew from probably like third year of college, from when I was a junior in college, that. I was not going to get a job. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm unemployable. Mm. So I n- needed to work for myself. So I didn't yeah. care about internships, but yeah. all of my other friends, they did like a lot of my friends who did yeah. internships, they ended up getting jobs at the company. They yep. did an internship at. Yep. Yep. That's, I mean, that's how you get into Boeing. You, you yeah. apply for a job at Boeing. You get an yeah. internship for a company that's subsidized yeah. to Boeing. And mm-hmm. then you get good at your job, and then mm-hmm. Boeing says, "Oh, we'll take you." Yeah, right. You know? yeah, and it's just like with Amazon. So my two friends who yeah. did internships at Amazon, they ended up working there. You know. Yeah, yeah. So it's just it's it's really interesting of like child development here. Yeah, uh, it's it's been something I've been thinking about a lot because you know I've been I've been uh, debating with my mm-hmm. wife whether or not we're going to send our daughter to uh, normal normal school mm-hmm. or international school here. Yeah, well, and we have a good school you could send her to. It's a school my son goes to. Well, you know that's also they, they in could be Kawasaki, friends. So no, it's in Yokohama, man. Oh, even Yokohama. Yeah, no, no, no. We were talking about um, so so the thing that that we were talking about was well, especially with like Shusho Katsudo networking and stuff yeah. like that. So like, yeah, in J- in Japan, it's almost like the road has been made very clear. Yeah, you just have to walk down, and there's a lot of effort made to push people down the road. Yes. Whereas in the states, it's more like. Here's kind of a road. Mm. It's more like a dirt road. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even say it's dirt road. I, I wouldn't even say there's a road at all. Mm-hmm. There's just like a vague, there's like a gas station <laughs> where there's like a guy being like, yeah, it's uh, like maybe 50 miles that way. Yeah. You know, and that's that's like what, that's the advice that you're given in life, like starting out as like even an elementary school kid. Because mm-hmm. like there there's always this like, I, I remember being an elementary student or elementary school student back in the U.S. and mm-hmm. I remember it's like we would have people come in and give like these vague talks about mm-hmm. your future. Yeah, right. Right. And I remember taking like when I was in sixth grade, we took like a job career test. Mm-hmm. Did you ever have to take those? Yes. Yeah. So we took like a job career test, and it's just like, dude, they were way off with me. Oh, really? Yeah. They said mine, I was going to be a teacher. So really, they worked out for me. That's <laughs> yeah. funny. Yeah, uh, mine was like a uh, deep space pilot. Well, you were like, going to like aviation school, yeah, right? So like my my mine was like really hands on, like yeah, like pilot, like sophisticated technical person. Mm-hmm. And it's like me, it's like I'm a teacher now. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, that worked out really great. Yeah, I mean, I can't complain. I yeah. like being a teacher, but yeah. It's like I I just want to emphasize on how wrong those tests yeah. are. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they definitely you are know? not a one size fits all kind of thing, you know. Yeah, it's it's like that that was pretty much the extent of the advice that I got for yeah. careers mm-hmm. until I and probably when I was a senior in high school. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, especially so that's another thing that you I know? think is is interesting is like in 
in high school in the States, they'll have like a counselor that you can go to for career advice. They have one, but I feel like they're never really used. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we always had like a school counselor that was mm-hmm. around to talk about stuff. Yeah. But like, we never used them for anything. It's probably because you were a bully. That's why. Oh, probably. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong about that. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's true. Yeah. Um, But it's like kids here, it's like, man... Especially at my new school. My new school, you can't really compare the kids because I don't feel like they're normal kids. Okay. Like, man, did I did I ever tell you about some of the kids in my entrance exams? No, no, okay. no, no. So we had this one. Make, kid. make sure you you keep it cleaner. Like, no, it's no, okay no, no, for, no. Okay, it's, it's totally clean. It's it's fine. It's it was just like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> so this kid, who was interviewing to get into my school, so mm-hmm. I was doing interviews. He was just like, first of all. This kid was interviewing for junior high. Mm-hmm. Okay? Not junior high school. High. Junior high. So I talked to this kid because he, he was applying to get into like the international program that my school has. Hmm. And he's just like, yeah, so uh, I was like, oh, okay. So what, let me tell me about your life. Mm-hmm. You know, so you obviously can speak fluent English. So how did, how did you come across that? Because mm-hmm. you're, you're a Japanese citizen. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well... Um, you know, I started out uh, doing business school in Mexico, and uh, then I joined the robotics team when I when I came back to Japan, and we won a championship. What? And uh, you know, I you know, won a couple of awards, and you know, I I decided to pursue English and master that. And uh, you know, now I'm applying for your school. And this kid is like, I mean, how old are you when you're applying to junior high? Like eleven. Eleven. Okay. 11 year old is telling me you went to business school for two yeah, years right. like what is going on here yeah <laughs> um that that's the level of kids that i wow get. Like, okay it's it's really crazy these kids mm. are genius level mm-hmm. like uh you know i i made a comment that like mm-hmm. my school's like whole thing was like we will get your kid in the toad eye mm-hmm. and it's like we're getting that level of kid okay in. so wow. it's it's pretty crazy but um you you look at a lot of kids here though and i think from elementary school Mm -hmm. i think a lot of the kids here have a very clear idea of what they Mm want to do okay or or even if even if they haven't by the definitely by the time they hit junior high Mm -hmm. they do okay you know um whereas like i mean you'll talk to high school or even college Mm -hmm. students and they don't know what they want to do in the u.s yeah right you know and that's that's like yeah that's the difference. Well, I feel like, you know, that also plays out really into like the the overall culture in general, you know. So mm. like like one thing that I really love about Japan is that it's so easy to live here. It is. If you know the rules. If you fit within society. So yeah, that's a perfect example. Um so I have gotten married and yeah. I now have a baby. Yeah. So I am a man here now. Yeah. Before I was not, I was treated as a boy. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really weird. Like, so my my situation is unique because I got married and I'm having a baby in yeah, the same right. year. But it's like, it's so crazy how differently I'm treated mm-hmm. here this year compared to last year. Yeah, right. Yeah, last year was like, though. oh, you're kind of just an irresponsible bachelor boy. Oh, yeah. we're not going to give you any respect. And we're yeah, right. This and like now it's like, oh yes, Mr. Miller is a mm-hmm. man now. Mm-hmm. He is a father, yeah. he is a husband, mm-hmm. and he is a man. Yeah. It, it's so crazy. It's such yeah. a stark difference here. And it's like, yeah. yeah, that like you said, though, like if you if you fit within the rules here, mm-hmm. like Japan is the easiest place in the world to live in. Yeah. Yeah, and on the opposite side of that, right, America is great if you are willing to do everything yourself. Yes. And you're willing to carve your own path. It's really yeah. the place for like the pioneers, I feel like, the people yeah. who... And the the tough thing that you have now in the states is that you have people who don't have that kind of self reliance, who are living in a in a society change that change your needs... damn oil by yourself. Yeah, right. So change the oil yeah. of your car by so yourself. When I, so like <laughs> like when we when we move when we moved house right like we yeah, this, oh we're out yeah we're in fair enough yeah so when, when we moved house right yeah. and like the room that Natsumi and I were going to stay in we painted that room ourselves yeah and Natsumi was like you paint your room by by yourself 
<laughs> what? But that's like very common in the states, right? Oh, you, you change wouldn't your even, oil. There, I don't even think there's companies. Well, I'm sure there is, but yeah. I, I wouldn't even consider hiring a company to yeah, paint the room. You do it yourself, yeah. and you change your oil, you change your tires, whatever. Yeah. Like it's it's that kind of self reliance, you know. Yeah. But so they're they're very opposite, you know. Yeah. But pick and choose which one you want to live in. Like sometimes, you know, living with freedom sounds nice until you realize living with freedom requires responsibility. I mean, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Between the two, I'd rather pick Japanese culture. I I get it, man. Yeah. I get it. I <laughs> like Yeah. I look, I like changing my oil. I like doing like mm-hmm. stuff that makes me feel like a, a a tough man. Yeah. But at the same time, if the washing machine breaks, Mhm. I don't want to spend three hours trying to figure out what's wrong with no, it. I get it, man. You know what I mean? I get it. <laughs> like, we had our washing machine break down like mm-hmm. two months ago, and it was like a plumbing issue. Mm. And it's like the American way is like, well, I got to go to the hardware store and buy new PVC pipe and yeah, fix it yourself. Fix it all here. Here in Japan, it's like my wife just called somebody. They showed up. They spent an hour and a half fixing it, and they went home. I paid yeah. 8,000 8, yen, and it was done. Yeah, yeah it's about the different <laughs> values, you know? <laughs> Yeah, so well, it's like so. My my mom, she, she um, she had a dad. It was my grandfather. Was a guy who like he knew everything about cars. Like he would like yeah. my mom over the phone would be like, "Hey, dad, my car is making this sound. What's wrong?" So, oh yeah, that's the thing. Is, is yeah. off. You should go talk to the mechanic about this. And like yeah. he was right all the time. Yeah. But it's just like a huge value difference. Right? Yeah. And so it's not like which one is better. It's like yeah. which one do you want to live in? Yeah, you know. And no, it's completely true and you know i'm the entrepreneur i, I made my own business so yeah. i feel like i could live in the united states just as easily but yeah. i would lose my mind <laughs> like it's very nice here <laughs> i i like i like freedom yeah so I, I i i don't know how i'll put it i like feeling free yeah but i don't like being free every everybody feels <laughs> you know that way I mean? everybody feels that way <laughs> and here in japan if you fit the rules you feel free yeah exactly but yeah <laughs> No, it's, it's it's so true. That's that's a that's a great thing, and that's a. I feel like that's a good point to end on. Yeah, I have I have a meeting. I have to go to. No, really fair enough, it. fair enough, man. But I'll, I'll talk to you next time. Mm.